Good morning, everyone. I want to uh, welcome you to the board for land use hearings and adjustments and the Zoning Board of Appeals for the city of Bonita Springs, Florida. Uh, we will have the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Mr. Jim Worcester, will you stand for the... All join Mr. Worcester and stand, please, those that are able. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And will you please remain standing for uh, Mr. And Bob and Robert and Serpy will lead us in uh, invocation. May we be guided with wisdom and understanding in our decision making. Keep our troops and our country out of harm's way. We ask this in your name. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Uh, first and foremost, I want to apologize to you folks from the Hyatt and others uh, that attended last week's meeting, and uh, a number of us were not in attendance, and we had to reschedule, so my uh, personal apology. My name is Roger Brunswick. I'm the chairman of the uh, zoning board, and uh, we're glad we're all here today, almost all of us, but we have a quorum, so we will proceed. Um, roll call, please. Robert and Serpy? Here. Chairman Brunswick? Here. Pete Pistori? Here. Richard Donnelly? Here. Frank Lyles? James Worcester? Here. Stephen Kissinger? Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll ask the city attorney, please, to call the first case. Thank you. This is the Pelican Landing Residential Plan Development Commercial Plan Development Amendment to amend Lee County Zoning Resolution Number 94-014 to incorporate uh, certain changes. One, to rezone 1.1 more or less acres from AG2 to CPD and add to the Pelican Landing DRI and CPD Land Development Area B slash Hotel. The second part of the request is uh, for deviations for the CPD Land Development for the Area B slash Hotel. Um, at this time, uh, first of all, this case has been continued from the July 21st date uh, to today, and so we continue with the advertisement and postings. The location of this property is at 5274, 5272, and 5260 Coconut Road. At this time, I'll swear in uh, witnesses. Um, let me go with M Mr. Arnold and Ms. Uh, Genson. Please raise your right hands. Do you swear a firm testimony you provide the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Now, both of you have been previously been tendered as an expert in land use and planning. Is that correct, Mr. Arnold? Correct. And Ms. Genson? Thank you. Um, let me swear in uh, some other witnesses. Um, if, uh, let me uh, go down the room. It's probably the best way to do it is just to go down. And do I have any other experts that we're going Richard to? Richard Ibach from my office. Okay. Is Okay, and we're not going into the hospitality expertise, expertise, it's mostly land use and planning, but I'll ask, so, well, I won't ask questions, but if it's needed, we'll get that as tendered as an expert. I'm gonna pass the mic and ask everyone to state their name. I need that for the court reporter to get it on the record correctly, um, after which I will do a group swearing in. If you do not wish to testify at all, uh, it's fine if you do not state your name for the record, but remember, I won't have you as record in the case at that time. Mr. Steinmeier? Uh, Rick Steinmeier. Harvey Monsefan, Food and Beverage Director. Let's uh, we go a little slower for the court reporter. Sure. Harvey Monsefan, Food and Beverage Director at Hyatt. Okay. So, Harvey, and then the last. Monsefan. Monsefan. Yes. M O N. S E. S-E. F-A-N. F-A-N. And he's the food and beverage director for the Hyatt. Joe DeMarco, director of engineering. Brian Kramer, general manager. Brad Marmon, Hyatt Hotels Corporation. Uh, Richard Iback, project manager with Grady Minor. Now, Mr. Ibeck, you've been previously been tendered as an expert as civil engineering um, before this tribunal, correct? Okay. Um, if we need to, we'll go through a voir dire. I'll do it after the swearing in. 
Barbara Craig, resident. Uh, Barbara Craig. Barbara Craig, resident. And that's resident of Pelican Landing Community? And Bonita Springs, yes. Ann Kramer, resident, Pelican Landing, and Bonita Springs. Marvin Hancock, resident, Pelican Landing. Bernard Kramer, resident, Pelican Landing, and Bonita Springs. John Dolmer, Community Development Director. If you all raise your right hands, do you swear or affirm testimony you're going to provide today's truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Um, Wayne, do you want me to have Richard tendered as an expert at this point? You can. I think it's really going to be here for specific questions. There may be. I don't know that he's going to provide engineering testimony, but you're welcome. We'll hold off on it until okay. necessary. All right. Please proceed with your case. Okay. Thank you. Good morning all, I'm Wayne Arnold with Grady Minor, professional planner, and um, pleased to be here representing the Hyatt with their request for the rezoning. The subject property, you all have seen it in your documentation, but you're probably all familiar with the existing Hyatt Hotel that's part of the Pelican Landing community at the end of Coconut Road. There was a 1.1 acre parcel of land that was annexed into the city as part of your annexations last year. And the Hyatt purchased the property with the intent of expanding their resort amenities into that area. So procedurally, there needs to be a comprehensive plan amendment that under the annexation agreements, the responsibility of the city, but the applicant was responsible for going through the, the zoning process to bring this into the Pelican Landing DRI CPD RPD zoning document. The development standards of the Pelican Landing community are, are what had been established for the hotel as part of Area B for that um, master plan. Here's another, it just shows you a little bit larger the context of the little over an acre piece of property that's uh, the subject of today's <coughs> hearing. The intent for that one acre is to put in a large pool amenity for the Hyatt. This is an active uh, water slide and lazy river type pool that's for the hotel guests only. It's not open to the general public, but will be for hotel guests. Um, to the north is the extension of Coconut Road. And you can see that it's, it's placed so that the existing spa pool area that exists, this area flows into that area uh, to the north. Here's another exhibit we provided staff. We're also in for the development order to actually construct the pool. This was a landscape plan that we provided because we did ask for a deviation on the landscape buffer on the northern property line. And I believe we've satisfied staff that uh, through the development order process, the landscaping and fencing that will be placed along the Coconut Road extension will be sufficient. I think that uh, obviously the Hyatt needs security and um, wants to be buffered from the road itself. So that is a landscape plan, a very detailed one that's been established for the project. Procedurally, um, there is a, there's a pointer on here, right? Audrey, is there a point? Top one. This area was called out on the original zoning documents for Pelican Landing. It was called an out parcel and it was not included. So part of our process is to amend that plan to go ahead and add that area to the the community. Oops, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. B. To call that out as area B and we call it out as the hotel. So that's the plan development master plan, and that was the DRI master plan. And both of those just simply are labeling to now include the, the line work so that this becomes part <coughs> of the Pelican Landing. The development standards um, are being modified slightly to accommodate the accessory structure, and those have been shown as underlying in your document. As I mentioned, we have the deviation for the Coconut Road right-of-way buffer the staff supporting based on our landscape plan. And I'll point out one other feature that's a little unique to what they're proposing to do here. And the food service for this pool amenity area is going to be provided in here. And it accommodates, if you can see these two areas, the other deviation we requested was to your food truck requirements and your land development code. And we did that out of an abundance of caution. But the Hyatt <coughs> proposes to have their food service made up of 
uh, food trucks that will pull in and, and be there fairly permanent, but it gives them an opportunity to change out the food service styles, maybe seasonally or, or as uh, taste change, rather than have a full built-in kitchen for this facility. But that's why that deviation is in place. With that, I'd be happy to answer questions if you have any, or um, be happy to respond to any public comments there may be. Do you have, do you have a slide that uh, shows us some of the abutting properties, uh, notably the uh, Pelican Landing, you know, how that? Probably one of these two aerials. Um, to the north is the old former Weeks Fish Camp property that you all have, have seen come through the zoning process, and that's located in this area, and that's their marina component. There is a marina at the end of the extension of Coconut Road, but the relationship here is, is really to Pelican Landing Foundation lands that are located here. Their use is it's primarily some wetlands and, and uplands, but as far as we know, there are no development plans for that for any future residential or commercial development. And then, of course, uh, if you go back the other side of the Hyatt, these are all parts of Pelican Landing community as part of the Raptor Bay Golf Club. Mm -hmm. I have one question. The, the gate on uh, onto Coconut, is that just for the food service? Of this, what, what's the purpose of that gate? What, what else coming in? This gate would be here, I'm assuming. Right. That, that will be for the food truck access, and it will also serve for maintenance to get to the some of the other structures, and it will be for fire protection. Okay, the food, food uh, is not coming from internally from the uh, Hyatt? The, it's my understanding, and we can let the Hyatt representatives uh, tell us, but it's my understanding that the food will be prepared in the food trucks as if you were on a food truck on the street. But these would be there on a more permanent basis for use of the hotel guests. Okay, I'd like a little further explanation when it okay. is appropriate. Sure. Guess we'll sure. On, yeah, Brian. please. Good morning. And again, state your name, please. I'm Brian Kramer, general manager at the Hyatt. Uh, the food trucks would basically be that. They'd be self-enclosed trucks that the food would be prepared on the truck, so it wouldn't be brought in from the actual hotel. And the intent is so that if we wanted to change up the menu, we could have a different truck come in and serve a different type of fare if we needed to uh, at different times of the year. So it would be self-contained. Okay, it won't be. It'll prepare all the food off-site somewhere, not on the side of the street, and then come in and drop it. Is it? No, it, it's actually prepared on the truck. The truck has kitchen equipment inside of it, and so the kit, they'll, they'll prepare on a griddle or a grill the food service inside the truck and then serve it right from the truck. Like the county fair. Right. Like the food truck okay. you'd see at the county fair. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, are the trucks, um, are these outside vendors that you'll be using? Well, we haven't made a final determination on that. I think my initial plan is to try to do one myself uh, that we would run and manage ourselves, and, and potentially lease one out uh, to somebody locally to come in and, and do that. Um, but uh, we haven't made a final determination on that as of yet. Thank you. The, the plan, I think, shows two gates. What is, what is the gate um, to the left? Upper left? Upper left, yeah. This gate? Right. In that location? This is a maintenance and pump building for the water slides and, to, and for the water feature that has a separate uh, opportunity for accessing that for maintenance purposes. Right. The board doesn't have that particular slide, do we? Yes. Uh, no, but we no. show the other slide. Shows it. Yes. This one? This one shows it. Oh, yes, okay, thank you. Partial. Any further questions from the board? The, uh, I think, think uh, I read somewhere in here that th this particular parcel is currently being used for overflow parking. So when that capacity goes away for overflow parking, where is there a need to relocate uh, overflow parking on the site? And again, I can let the hotel representatives, but I don't believe this is used for the hotel parking itself. I think there are some overflow parking that's involved with 
maintenance and other activities and yeah, it, it, traditionally that's been overflow parking for our employees for the hotel if we have uh, a very busy day in the hotel. Uh, one, I've been at the property for 10 months now. I, I, I'm uh, fairly new coming in. And so I've reevaluated uh, the way that they've structured the parking in the building currently. And we've made modifications. Uh, um, essentially what's happened is our valet parking was too big in the hotel. And our, our, our self-parking would be full. Our valet parking would be empty, and we'd have employees parking over in what we called Hyatt Park, that area there. Uh, so we've restructured the way that we do valet parking in the hotel where we can make it smaller or we can make it larger to accommodate based on uh, what we need. When the, when the building was originally open, it was open with the right amount of parking spaces. We need to run at full capacity, and we kind of restricted ourselves by, by imposing the way that we did uh, valet parking in the hotel. So. We've modified that, which should make the adjustments necessary so we can be flexible enough so that we don't need the overflow anymore. Thank you. Gentlemen, any, uh, any further questions from the board? Seeing none, hearing none. Uh, public comment? Or no, uh, I'm sorry, staff <laughs> presentation. I forgot that you were here, Jackie. <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> What did I get a look? <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to get testimony in the record. Just for the record. Right? Mm -hmm. Good morning. For the record, Jacqueline Ginson with Community Development presenting uh, staff's presentation. Um, as Ms. Vance read it, this is an amendment to an existing CPD RPD to bring in property to the Pelican Landing RPD CPD uh, for the Hyatt Resort amenity expansion. Um, it's the amendment itself, as you see in the ordinance, the additions are in strike through, or sorry, in underline, and it's just to add the resort amenity feature. There's no other changes regarding principal structure setbacks and whatnot to this request. Um, as Mr. Arnold pointed out in his aerial, this is the property in question. Historically, the Hyatt purchased the hotel, uh, this parcel, these three parcels um, years ago before it was um, a residential use. Um, and that property or the residential structure was demolished or removed. And historically, it has been acting as a, an overflow parking area, but it's not overflow parking to meet their required parking spaces. They have sufficient required parking on their site that they demonstrated through their site plan approval process. Uh, the future land use, as Mr. Arnold explained, uh, this is part of an annexation agreement. We will be updating their land use classification, most likely during the evaluation appraisal report process, um, as we will the remainder of the annexation parcels that the city annexed um, part of last year. And so right now we are looking at this classification under the current Lee plan designation, which we are allowed to do under state statute. So it is classified as um, outlying suburban and the uses that they are requesting are consistent with that land use classification, as well as their proposed classification that the city might go ahead and assign to it, which would probably be the moderate density uh, plan development classification, which is synonymous with all of um, the Pelican Landing property within the city of Bonita Springs. Uh, the current zoning is AG2, but of course, as part of this request, they're asking to bring the property into the RPD, CPD. Um, this will be specifically the CPD area B. Uh, the current use, as we explained, is, is vacant commercial for the overflow. Regarding the surrounding land uses, zoning, and um, current land uses, again, this is the property here. Um, to the west, you have the Pelican Landing RPD CPD, and this is the marina parcel. As Mr. Arnold stated, a majority of this is under conservation easement. Um, this area here was cleared a, a little, maybe a few years ago, as well as this area here for some parking for the marina itself. Uh, to the south uh, is the existing hotel property, uh, again, with the land use being Lee County, uh, Lee Plan designations until the city can go ahead and address that through the EAR process but the zoning is still part of the entire Pelican Landing CPD RPD, and it's the existing resort and hotel. To the north, as Mr. Arnold also explained, is the Weeks Fish Camp Marina, or Stero Bay Marina, as you will, which the zoning board did hear those cases last year to go ahead and, and reuse that marina. And to the east, you do have the Raptor Bay Golf Community, um, the CLO project <laughs> in Pelican Landing, and again, the existing hotel. 
this is just another exhibit of the addition of the AG zone property into the entire hotel parcel. Uh, the master concept plan, just to give you a little history on this document, this zoning was originally approved in 1994. And the zoning is conditioned that as each track comes in, it receives another zoning level of review called final plan approval. So once this action, if approved by the city council, is done, they will have to come in again. It's an administrative review process for final site plan approval. So this plan, by its own nature, is very general. It's what we like to call almost like a bubble plan. It just generally identifies this area is RPD, this area is CPD. So that's why you won't see the level of detail um, that you would at site plan approval or local development approval. So this is just to zoom in the area that's added right here. Conditions of, the of approval. Again, what staff did is for condition three, it's to add the accessory amenity uses. So we went ahead and add those conditions which are contained in your staff report. And then we have conditions relative to the two deviations that the applicant requested. And I'll go through each one individually. Uh, deviations one through 21 are existing deviations. We are not um, amending or touching those deviations. The new deviation 22, as Mr. Arnold, Arnold explained, is a deviation from a 15-foot right-of-way buffer that is required adjacent to a right-of-way. And because of the unique design for the resort amenity and to fit all the drainage and the landscaping, what they did is did an um, alternate buffer where they're going to meet or exceed the type D buffer requirements, <coughs> planting material, but it's just going to be structured differently and fit into that area in a, in a smaller space. Um, and so staff was concerned about what that looked like, and, and we definitely know that the Hyatt wants to create a high level of standard and whatever they do, but staff also wanted to make sure that those patrons were protected as well. So we did ask for additional detail, and that is outlined in condition three. But this is a more detailed level view. Again, we usually don't get into this level of detail at zoning, but because this is a deviation request, we wanted to see more detail. But this is the engineering level plans right here, and this is the landscape plan for that area. And you can see all the different types of shrubs that they will be planting, again, to create an opa opaque screen. It's just as much as um, their best interest as well as the city to make sure that it's designed to a certain aesthetic standard. Deviation 23 is regarding the mobile food trucks. and. Staff and the applicant were kind of going back and forth. Is it really a mobile food truck or not? I, I kind of equate this to picture yourself at Disney or a theme park, and they have the little the trucks that have different food options or services or beverages. And staff went ahead and put in conditions that the food trucks have to be contained entirely within the site. They can't be visible from the right of way or adjacent properties. So there's plenty of protections in place for this type of use. But it really is going to operate as if you were in a theme park and. Here's a truck for popcorn and, and sodas. Um, so staff had no problem with this deviation request. Uh, surrounding property and compatibility, as I explained, it's an expansion of an existing resort amenity. Um, and staff's major concerns were just the safety and the buffering for the hotel guests. Uh, consistency with the Bonita plan, as I explained earlier, it still has a lead plan land use designation. So we went ahead and evaluated both of the, um, land use classifications of what it's classified under the LEAP plan and what it would be under the Bonita plan. We found it consistent with those uses. Um, in terms of the future land use element allowable uses, we felt that this was a, a compatible use to the hotel um, as it exists and the proposed planned uses uh, for the marina and the existing um, Pelican Landing Marina to the west. And in terms of concurrency and availability of public services, that is required at time of local development order approval. But they have met um, several times with city staff and other review agencies, such as Bonita Springs Utilities, Estero <coughs> Fire, and Bonita Fire, to make sure that certain things were in place as they move forward through the process. And in terms of the finding, there's 10 findings that staff had to evaluate to make sure that we could um, recommend approval for this request. And staff found them all consistent with those 10 criteria. And I'm here if you have any questions. Mr. Dahlmer is, and so is Sean Gibbons, uh, for any environmental landscaping questions. Jack, is, is uh, a deviation anticipated for the height of the uh, 
water slide structure? Um, there's there would be no deviation request for the height. They established their own property development regulations. So you'll see in the accessory structure setbacks, those are the setbacks that they're requesting. So it's not necessarily a deviation. We're approving, we, you would be recommending approval of those setbacks today in this document. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Thank you, Jackie. All right, um, Jim, would you turn up those lights over there at the far end, please? Um, we have some public comment. Anybody wishing to, uh, the other way, turn them up, up brighter? All three of them. Thank you. Any, yeah, thank you. Oh, there you go. Public yeah. comment. Yes, good morning. Uh, good morning. Rick Steinmeier. I believe the uh, community development um, CH2M Hill have done a very uh, extensive job of evaluating this, and, and I approve it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any other public comment? Please come forward and state your name. My name is Barbara Hinkson Craig. I'm a resident of Pelican Landing and voter in Bonita Springs. I'm a professor emerita of Wesleyan University in Middletown, Connecticut, where my teaching, research, and writing was in the area of public law, public policy, public administration, and regulatory <coughs> policy. Several things provided in the annexation agreement allow the owner, the Hyatt, to make certain changes in its property, including but not limited to the following. A, food and alcohol service and consumption at the private beach park, which was the subject of a hearing like this last summer, at which I also testified in objection and continue to fight. And C, inclusion of a water facility amenity to serve guests of the hotel. One other provision in this annexation agreement, an agreement which I had no idea existed until I found it in the documents accompanying this hearing, is that the agreement, quote, shall be construed and enforced in accordance with the laws of the state of Florida, and I trust with the controlling laws of the city, county, and federal government as well. Applicant here is asking for a waiver from some of those laws, and it is to three of those waivers that I wish to raise objections. First, I wish to clarify that I have no opposition to the addition of a lazy river and a slide on the property per se. I simply wish that the environmental laws and regulations that exist um, implementing those laws be applied to assure that the development of this project has no adverse environmental impact on the surrounding area which is mostly protected areas covered in mangrove wetlands, draining into the protected estuary of Estero Bay. It is precisely to assure that damage is not done to environmentally sensitive areas that the law requires these three things, a soil, vegetation, and topography assessment, an assessment of potential effects on the surface water management plan, and a formal environmental impact analysis all of which are required to be done by competent experts in the field. It is not sufficient to simply state without evidence, as this application does, that this proposal, quote, will not adversely affect environmentally critical areas or natural resources. This is the portion of this application to which I object, and that is to the applicant's request to have these legal requirements waived. I suggest that the most, most appropriate action for the applicant Hyatt Hotel in light of the Hyatt Hotel Corporation's widely trumpeted, with much publicity and fanfare, commitment to, and I quote off of their own websites, environmental stewardship, and quote, to taking focused, aggressive steps to reduce our impact by implementing more sustainable building practices across our operations, is to withdraw its request for these waivers from doing the appropriate and critical environmental analyses before development, and to put its money where its mouth and commitment are, and that is to support the message it spreads worldwide on the internet, and I imagine in many other venues as well. It's very easy to ask your 300 to 500 a night hotel guests to help you to protect the water supply and reduce energy consumption um, by re reusing their towels and bed sheets and lowering the air conditioning. Great ideas and lovely because it saves you tons of money. 
I am asking you here at the Hyatt to be the environmental steward your corporation professes itself to be. Do the legally required environmental analyses. Withdraw your request for these waivers. And if the Hyatt fails to withdraw its request for the waivers from these legal requirements, then I ask the Bonita Springs Zoning Board to do its job and deny them. And if neither of you will do what I think is right, then I will be back before the City Council and in the meantime do all I can ensure that the appropriate and right environmental analyses are done. Thank you very much. Thank you. And to make this easier for you, Thank I have a copy for your record, okay? Thank you. Does anybody else wish to come forward? <coughs> Please state your name. My name is Thomas Marvin Hancock. I'm a resident in Pelican Landing. I'm here to ask the uh, zoning board to incorporate language in their approval. If, if, if they do approve, that the applicant will comply with all prior conditions of the zoning board, as well as all laws, rules, and regulations. I ask you to do that because last year you approved uh, um, beverage service on our beach. And as, as part of your uh, approval, you, the, it said there would be no amplified music. Our amplified music is prohibited from March 1 to October 30th due to potential disturbances to sea turtles and shorebird nesting and roosting. Unfortunately, there was a glitch, and there appears, it appears there was an event and after this date, and it also, there was another event scheduled, which was uh, canceled a few hours before it happened. So my, my um, request is that in view of the fact that there was a glitch, with these dates and something did occur that shouldn't have occurred, I'm asking you to put in stronger language in your conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other, uh, anyone else wish to speak to this? Uh, any uh, comments from you, Mr. Miner? If I might, I would oh, just Mr. Add, Arnold, excuse me. I'm sorry, I would just add for the record that, that we are going through an environmental resource permit review with the Water Management District that will evaluate surface water management and environmental issues. Uh, the site's been previously impacted and I think staff uh, rightly agreed with our request for a waiver from providing this information that, that will go through a separate review process. Okay. If I may also. Please. Um, I'm sure that Professor Kramer um, is a very good professor, but we also have to comply with Florida statute section 166.033, which sets forth that you don't uh, delay or prolong the zoning while waiting for the environmental. If somebody needs to get state or federal, they need to, uh, they go through that process independently. We, we're not allowed, we are prohibited from uh, delaying a project for that reason. Um, LDC Chapter 4 does have um, application requirements of what an applicant um, is required to submit at time of a rezoning application. Um, the city does allow for waivers of uh, requests, and the applicant did submit a waiver request with their justification. And Mr. Kirby, unfortunately, he was not here. He had a vacation. <laughs> so he was here last week, so he would have been able to testify. But he reviewed the waiver request and found that based on the current condition of the site and he does site visits um, that he felt that he did not need that material and that the permits from the state and the water management district would go ahead and provide the information that he would need um, but staff agreed that the applicant um, did not need those items at this time because of the current conditions and we can have Sean get up and testify if the board would like that Do we want to hear that testimony is, is he here? He, uh, Sean is here. He's with. Yeah. 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 Sure. Okay. Your first time? Yeah. Oh, this will be fun. Oh, exciting. <laughs> uh -huh. 
And I uh, didn't even have a curriculum to tie for you. So let me uh, state your full name for the record. Uh, Sean Michael Gibbons. And where do you work? Community Development in the City of Bonita Springs. And do you have any other jobs also? Um, I'm also a professor of public administration at Boulder Gulf Coast University. Okay, in your capacity at City of Bonita Springs, uh, what do you do? Um, I do environmental reviews with Mr. Kirby as well as landscape compliance. And how long have you been doing that? Um, about three months now. Before that, I was doing permitting technician and intake for any kind of development orders, permits, the like. And in your job, do you um, typically and normally go about uh, doing environmental inspections? I have just recently started doing so, but yes. Okay, and when you go out in the field, are you able to recognize different conditions of land? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and um, let's see. Uh, you are a professor of public administration. Did you have any environmental curriculum while attending? Uh, yes, during my undergraduate degree, I took environmental biology at this Florida, um, as well as a series of biology courses, biology one, biology two, which does have environmental impacts. You're going to oh, have sorry. to talk slow. I took um, the environmental biology of Southwest Florida for my undergraduate degree, as well as biology one and two, um, both which require lab and field work in the field. So you're very familiar with uh, this area of Benita Springs? Yes, ma'am. Actually, I've been here my entire life. Okay. At this time, I believe he can be tendered as an expert in envir as an environmental specialist, uh, environmental planning, if the board agrees. I agree. And no objections, I presume? No objection. Uh, Mr. Gitt. Gibson, you've heard the testimony today that there's been some inspections out on the property. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that it is uh, something where the waivers can be provided? Uh, given the quality of the area, it's largely been used, I'm sorry, given the quality of the area, it's largely been used as a parking lot. Um, the majority of it has been ditched, diked, and dredged, so there's not much area there to really environmentally impact. I can appreciate the concerns regarding the surrounding area where the Estero Bay might impact that, but Again, given the specific site we're looking at, there's not much there. Um, there's a small buffer hedge on the west side, as well as, I guess it would be the north side in this case. But outside of that, the area has largely been disturbed. Um, the environmental quality of that area has been degraded substantially. So I don't see any substantial concerns regarding the specific lot in and of itself, no. Have you reviewed uh, the zoning request as well as uh, the zoning uh, conditions? Or the actual this requirements? Yes. Only partially. Again, Mike was the lead on this one, so I have not seen them in their entirety. Um, in the review of it, would it enhance the um, the area after being built as opposed to its current state? I think it would definitely. I mean, it would provide a much more substantial use of that portion of the property. Otherwise, it's going to be underused. Um, it will collect water and serve as detention area. But again, the water it is collecting is probably not getting the kind of treatment it would require. And that's a concern um, with the development of the area and of the lot. I think we actually get a much better long-term use out of that. Um, are you familiar with Florida Statute Section 166.033? In terms of not being able to hold up permits? As far as uh, issuance of permits and as far as uh, delays for other agencies with water Correct. Management. As from one of the best of my understanding, we're not able to hold up permits at our level of government for other levels of government's permits. So again, things like South Florida Water Management, we cannot hold up the zoning review for those permits. Okay. But you could put a condition that would say you can't um, actually go do the construction until you obtain those permits. Correct. Okay. Any further questions? Did, did you have a chance to look for things like uh, eagle's nests? Yes, we rather with Mr. Kirby we did. Um, again, there's no eagle nest in that area specifically at this point in time. Um, in terms of gopher tortoises, the lot itself does not contain any. Um, we did not do an assessment of the surrounding peripheral areas, so the other actual land tracks, but that lot in and of itself has nothing on it of any really environmental significance at this point in time. It's, again, it's been largely disturbed. It, it's been an or, a gold parking lot, essentially, so for a significant been, period of time. So it's been filled? It's been filled, it's been diked, yeah. I mean, again, it, it, at this point in time right now, it's probably full of water, given the brainstorms we've had. So, I mean, it's, it's not functioning as it needs to function. So, again, developing that site would have no substantial additional environmental impact that's probably already having on it. If I may, for the record, Jacqueline Genson, if you look in your staff report on page 11 of 12, um, Mr. Kirby did go ahead and summarize the site conditions that um, he had witnessed when he did his site visit. So you can see how he explained it's been cleared, mowed. He didn't find any listed species, heritage trees, or indigenous vegetation. Um, so he did do a physical site visit and summarized his findings on page 11. Roger, I have a question. Yes, sir. 
the um, parking that's overflow parking that's currently being used there has yes, that sir. degraded the property been really allowed if, if you could look at it from the idea that it had not been parked on mm -hmm. would the site be environmentally impacted had it not been a parking lot otherwise yes no not to any significance again previously there was a residential building there that building might have been demolished the lot itself has been leveled um grassed over there are some again coconut trees other non-listed species non-natives along the peripherals but outside of that that lot in and of itself was essentially you know a grass field there wasn't much going on there it didn't have any of the indicators of the adjacent mangrove population um, there wasn't even a lot of wetland area there to speak of as well so it mostly is just again it's it's a glorified meadow detention area that hasn't been doing much other than just collecting water and sitting there thank you yes sir absolutely thank you any other questions anything else Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, anything else to add by the Hyatt or staff? Okay. Summary? I have no comment. Waiting no comment. for a motion. Waiting for a motion. Mr. Chair, I just. Uh, could you answer this gentleman's concern about the, uh, the noise and the music? Well, how, does that, how will that impact the, uh, this area? Let me have um, higher representatives talk to you. I, I think what they're referring to is a special exception, not the zoning case per se, but there were conditions about the amplified music, and I don't believe that it's the Hyatt who had that event, but I'll let them address that. Sorry, yes, it was a Hyatt event. It was a Hyatt event. It was out at the Beach Park. It, it, it wasn't. I'm sorry, Brian Kramer again. Um, it was at the Beach Park. It wasn't uh, at this site that we're talking about here today. Um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with the one event that was talked about that happened that uh, violated any ordinance. Uh, there was a second event that was supposed to happen out at the Beach Park. Um, it was my understanding at the time when the event was booked that the nesting season was May 1st through, as typical nesting seasons are, at the end of October. Uh, I wasn't aware that in the ordinance it was March 1st. Uh, somewhere along the lines, I think that was changed, and it was changed to March 1st. Um, once uh, we became aware that it's March 1st and that we would be violating the ordinance, we canceled the party um, at great expense, frankly, uh, to the hotel and brought it back to the hotel because we didn't want to be in violation. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, anything else? We want to uh, call for a vote, a motion to approve or disapprove. I'll make a motion that uh, that we approve it with the condition, you know, that uh, as far as the noise is you know, that gets, uh, gets addressed that somebody monitors that. But I'd uh, like to somehow or another put that in as far well, as... Uh, have a noise that they just need to yeah, be subject to. Yeah, yeah. So... The noise isn't yeah, part this, of this. The, this has nothing to do with the beach park. This has... To I understand that, but I'm... But the water amenity and... Do we do we have hours of the amenity in there? We don't. Um, and this is a dawn to dusk, right? Is the... Mr. Kramer? Yes, the pool, the pool itself will be dawn to dusk. Uh, the pool decks themselves are, 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 are potentially open uh, later in the evening for people to be able to walk around, but the actual pool itself is But it won't be any music or anything like that? Uh, uh, we may have, yes, we may have a, a group event that uh -huh. we do out on the deck as we do any of the other pool decks that we have at the hotel. Um, so on our main pool deck, if we have a group and we do an evening cocktail reception for them out there, they may they have They would still be subject to noise control yeah, ordinances. Right. Same yeah. normal ordinances. Yeah. Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, the concern uh, discussion, uh, the concern was uh, that the noise that was referred to was coming from the beach park, right. an event that was held at the beach park, and as I understand it, uh, there was a communication mix-up or not understanding the turtle nesting season dates, so the first <coughs> event was held 
outside of those? Uh, it wasn't the turtle, it was roosting birds. The, the migratory birds has a different date. And so uh, there was additional, what, what Mike Kirby did with, and the zoning board agreed to it, was they added additional months that your normal cutoff, um, and okay. so the event was held, and our normal event process, no one realized there was special migratory concerns on this particular island. And uh, so not the statutory dates, it was above and beyond. What would be the normal, and this is just a general question for all of us, I suppose, but what would be the normal method that the public or the Hyatt in this case would know when those dates change how would they be notified would we would it uh, is it published uh, it was I mean, in how are how are people expected to know when these right. things change when we did the pelican well first of all it's it's not a it's not a city ordinance um well i'm sorry let me fix that statement it's not a general legislative city ordinance for the migratory birds okay in this particular situation the additional time frame only applied to the Pelican Landing Community Association's uh, portion of Big Hickory as the special, I'm serious, as the special exception for the consumption on premises. Um, there was a noise condition modified because of roosting birds that it was not, our normal standards are manatees, eagles, and uh, manatees, forgetting a species here. Oh, sea turtles. And it was not any of those three dates, the big three. So when it was time for a special event permit, nobody picked up on that the zoning resolution had a specific <clears throat> date. So just be aware, I get, there's no way to, to know when these dates change. Everybody's protected but the humans. Uh, <laughs> well, I think roosting birds are important to protect. Uh, again, this was a condition. I don't. I'm trying to remember if it went to the zoning board and the condition was added, or if it went. Uh, city council modified the condition. The I don't big, recall the I zoning board. Mm -mm. I'm trying to remember. No, I don't. But it was know. added in. It was an extra two months. It seemed okay. fine. And then, of course, it, it went into season. What I'm what I'm trying to get out of, get at obviously is so that this doesn't reoccur. Uh, how they would be notified or how the, how we would expect them to be notified so we don't uh, we try to make sure problem. again our especially our communications department works very hard to try to make sure everybody's aware and cognizant of the different rules because again sea turtles you're going to look at issues in the water you're not necessarily going to look at it inland so depending on where the property is what are the situations there'll be different rules that you apply. Okay, well, thank you. So we do have a motion. Um, and do we have a, uh, w with, uh, without the additional right. language that you asked for? Right. And uh, do we have a second to that motion? I'll second the motion. Okay, this is a motion for approval. Um, very good. Any uh, further discussion? Could we, could we have a roll call, please? Chairman Brunswick? Yes. Robert Inserpe? Yes. Pete Pistori? Yes. Richard Donnelly? Yes. Jim Worcester? Yes. Thank you all very much. Thank you for your presentations, both staff, Grady Minor, the Hyatt folks. And uh, we wish you well with your new project and uh, enhancement to your property. Uh, one other thing on the agenda this afternoon or this morning is we have the minutes from our last meeting. If you'll please just remain seated for one second. Um, we have the minutes to approve from our last meeting of June 16th, uh, 2015. And I have a... Uh, Motion to approve. So moved. Second? I'll second it, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Uh, minutes are approved. Uh, having no further business, meeting's adjourned. <laughs>